Yes, sir. Super Bowl 53 preview show coming at you. Super Bowl. Yes, sir. Episode 3. Um, like I said, uh, this is Sab, my man Pat. Episode 3, Super Bowl preview show. Thank you all very much for the ongoing support, as always. Uh, I mean, the views, the likes that have been pouring in uh, over the last couple of days even more. Uh, I know we've gone about five or six days without a show. That won't happen again. Um, uh, just uh, quick quick notes, obviously, make sure you like the Facebook page, Jira Nuzzy Podcast. Uh, we're also on YouTube, Jira Nuzzy Podcast, and right now on Twitter as well. So make sure you're liking, following, subscribing to all those. Uh, most of you have already. Uh, we appreciate the support. <clears throat> all right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to start, uh, you know, the Super Bowl show with, a, I guess, the stat of the day, so to speak. I mean, it, a stat that I've, I've show, uh, shared with probably most of you listening already, but something I definitely wanted to throw out there. Uh, you know, we talk about Tom Brady and his, you know, amazing success in his career. Uh, he's played 18 seasons. He's played 17 full seasons. He's pretty uh, good. He's, he's all right. He, you know, he, he has his moments. Uh, so if you take out the uh, the year he got hurt, he got hurt week one against the Chiefs. Bernard Pollard became a local hero for some people who really hate the Patriots. So I'm not going to say it. I'm not any, any names, you know. But um, so Tom Brady's played 17 full seasons. He's made the Super Bowl 52 percent of the time he's been playing. Which unbelievable. Is unbelievable. It's phenomenal. Right. So that will uh, never be. Uh, not only not duplicated, but no one's even gonna come close to that. I'm sorry, it's just yeah, it's just not gonna happen. No. Unfortunately, unfortunately for all of us football fans who don't like Tom Brady, but now, but respect the hell out of him as we as we said in the past. But so 52 percent of the time, Tom Brady's made the Super Bowl. Terry Bradshaw for his career had a 51 percent completion percentage, which by today's standard, because the game has changed, you know, isn't very great. However, Michael Jordan, arguably the greatest player of all time. That's another debate for a different show. 49.7% career field goal percentage. So, with that being said, Tom Brady has a better shot of making the friggin' Super Bowl than Terry Bradshaw has of completing a pass or Michael Jordan making a jump shot. That, to me, just blew my mind and something I had to share with everybody. Pat, I know we, we talked about it a couple days ago, and we just we, we had to look it up multiple times just to make sure it wasn't fake that's absolutely amazing i mean you know i know every year we we always say patriots are in it seems like every year we say the patriots are in it. but really they basically are in it every year you know and every as a, a, w- with that stat you know basically he's in the super bowl every other year when he's played a full season uh, it, it, it's just remarkable the guy's yeah. absolutely amazing i mean um and he's not showing any signs of slowing down. He's come out and said um, he will definitely be back next year. And uh, I think he's just going to keep adding to that stat as uh, scary as it sounds because Patriots have have plenty of cap room. They have a lot of picks in this upcoming draft. Um, you got some good young players, Sony Michelle. You know, I, I think they're going to start kind of building the team, uh, more of a running team as Brady gets uh, gets older. He's pretty old already. But, yeah, um, <laughs> right. Uh, so... He's just going to continue adding to it, so it's 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 just a amazing stat. Um, but you know, uh, will he be able to take home the Lombardi Trophy yeah, this well, time I mean, around? That's that's another thing, and you know, like we said, uh, you know, he's 41 years old, um, and he has said in the past, uh, he said his goal was to play till he's 45. And he had an interview a couple days ago, and they asked him. I think it was with ESPN. They asked him, so win or lose, what are the sh- what are the chances of you retiring, win or lose after this game? And he held up. A zero. Zero chance. He said it. 45 is my goal, so we should just take away the whole, oh, is Brady going to retire? Is Belichick going to retire? It's just not going to happen. I mean, just I'm I'm at peace with it. Uh, <laughs> he's going to be here, and he's going to be here until his arm falls off or, you know, something oh, like that happens. And, you know, as, mu- as much as we um, – like to root against them. I, I think he, he, I think you would agree. He, he's good for the game. He, he, you know, he makes things more interesting. I think we need Tom Brady in the NFL. Um, you know, you want to have that guy to root against. Uh, certainly, uh, getting a little bit tired of seeing the Patriots in the Super Bowl and no championship games here, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it'll be interesting now, you know, with Patrick Mahomes, you, you know, there's some definitely good young quarterbacks that are going to be giving him a run. And uh, one guy, um, uh, on this Sunday, Jared Goff, can he start adding to his potential legacy, you know? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Jared Goff obviously playing in his first Super Bowl in his fourth playoff game, okay, total. Uh, him and McVay together have played in four playoff games. Uh, Brady and Belichick have played in nine Super Bowls. So we obviously got the uh, experience versus the, uh, you know, the kids in this in this uh, Super Bowl. But it uh, it's definitely – Go ahead. Well, yeah, just let me just say Sean McVay uh, grew up around a winning uh, tradition. His family, his grandfather, uh, John McVay, was the general manager of the San Francisco 49ers, took over when Bill Walsh uh, came there in uh, 1979, and he built those great 49er teams of the, the 80s and early 90s, and McVay grew up around that. I remember uh, hearing a story. He, he, um, he was studying the West Coast offense when he was eight years old, you know, and he, he's got access to all those Bill Walsh uh, game room uh, uh, films that he did, the playbooks and all that. So he's de- and, and, and he, he was very close with his, you know, with his grandfather was still still alive to this day. But uh, he was around with those teams. So he definitely uh, is familiar with winning. You know, he's got some 49er blood in him. Yeah, he's definitely an experienced uh young guy if you will uh, obviously the years as a coach head coach aren't aren't there in the playoff experience as far as that goes but he's definitely a guy that's been around the game from an early age like you said and, and just uh, fyi his his grandfather um uh, john mcveigh discovered john gruden as well as a player so that's pretty kind of when you listen to sean mcveigh he kind of he kind of sounds a little bit like john gruden i was well, listening to you know, I was listening to him Absolutely. and Goff uh, talk to uh, Kurt Warner the other day, and they were breaking down some film, and I, I felt like I was, like, listening to a young John well, that, that was his first coaching job. He uh, was a kind of an intern and an offensive assistant for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for two years, so that's how he broke into the NFL coaching ranks. And, of course, then he coached with John's brother in Washington where he was uh, the tight ends coach and an offensive coordinator, and uh, Kyle Shanahan actually – hired him when he was there with his dad mike so it's it's that you know that same coaching tree absolutely yeah and then and there's, there's pl- it's plenty of experience on that tree and uh let's uh i mean we could sit here and talk about all these coaches all day you know tom brady and everything but you know let's get into the game i mean uh you know we talk about mcveigh and uh you know the things they're gonna have to do to uh because obviously they are the slight underdog in this game i think it's still at two and a half uh for those of you that uh like to dabble in the gambling uh industry uh two and a half points um it opened at one uh for the rams rams were favored by one and that lasted all about of uh, i think it was an hour before the patriots <laughs> favored so um so you see which way the line's going there's pat i know you uh you wanted to talk a little bit about what the rams you know what they needed to do to you know, basically stop brady i mean that's that's basically what what's, what's coming down to here well i mean i i, I the- I'm not rocket scientist. You got to get pressure on Tom Brady. Obviously, Tom Brady, when you get pressure on him, when you hit him, he's a different quarterback. I, I know most quarterbacks are when you get pressure on him and hit him. But Brady in particular, when you uh, can get pressure on him and rattle him a little bit, he, he, gets a, he gets off his game. And to me, the Rams are of a similar team uh, to a team that's given the Patriots some trouble the last couple of years. And that team I'm referring to is the Jacksonville Jaguars. They have a big physical, athletic front four, front seven, just like the Jaguars do. And the Jaguars, you know, they, they, they blew out New England early in the year. They gave them a run for their money last year in the AFC championship game. And to me, the Rams have that same style of defense in the front four, the front seven. And also, too, they even have a better secondary with Marcus Peters, Joyner, and to me, the guy who could really be the X factor, I know we've talked about this, Sab, is Aqib Talib. He's yep. healthy, and he's playing at a high level again, and he's familiar with the Patriots having played there. The experience that, factor, for sure. And then played, played for the Broncos when the Broncos beat the Patriots. So he's got a lot of familiarity against the Patriots. He knows what they like to do. And I, I really think he's going to be a key guy for the Rams on Sunday, but uh, it comes down to the pressure. You know, can Aaron Donald and Sue get pressure on uh, on Brady up front? And then uh, my guy, I've been saying it all playoffs, the X factor, Dante mm-hmm. Fowler off the edge. He's to me, yeah, he, Michael, he's that Michael X Brockers, factor. Yeah, he sure is. Sorry to interrupt. Bro- you yeah, Brock is also a big thing here. Mm-hmm. And uh, you go back, going back to Talib really quick. I know we were talking. You know, do you throw Talib on on Gronk? Do you keep him outside? Do you put him on Edelman? Do you have him shadow Edelman? I personally, personally think he's going to be all over the field. Whether it's 
situational. Wade Phillips, I know in Denver, we, we talked about how, uh, you know, Tlaib has some success against Brady and the Patriots, and, and Wade Phillips put Tlaib all over the field. He had him on Edelman. He had him on Gronk. Uh, he had the luxury of Chris Harris, who was another guy that could flow all over the place. I personally think t- this game, he's going to be shadowing Gronkowski. Gronkowski came alive in the AFC title game. I, I think that's the guy you have to. So you, throw so, him you on. so you, so you put uh, Talib on Gronk over Marcus Peters. I would, I would put Talib on Gronk just because with the experience factor, he's had mm-hmm. experience against playing, played with Gronk at the Patriot in the Patriots, went against him at practice all the time, mm-hmm. uh, went against him in the AFC title games, and every year it seemed the Patriots and Broncos up until this year were playing each other. So for mm-hmm. me, I would, I would throw Talib on Gronk and have Peters either maybe shadow Edelman or or throw the guy, take the guys on the outside. Roby Coleman, if he can stop. Uh, you know, <laughs> with the with the, I mean the the pass interference that wasn't called her around the world. I mean he's a guy, he's a guy that they're gonna need too. You know, you need everybody, all hands and on deck when you. Lamarcus Joyner too, the the safety. I mean, the, absolutely. They and they got a talented defense. They definitely, um, you know, have the guys who can get after Brady and the, and it, and it's really gonna come down to stopping the run because we keep talking about Tom Brady, Tom Brady, and of course you know he's great, but uh, the Patriots uh, have been winning run the ball here in the playoffs with Sony Michelle uh kind of heading that running attack uh and the Rams they they, they stopped the run pretty well and, and the Patriots don't I mean the Patriots going you know the last game uh, uh you know last couple of games of the year they had prompt stopping the run they couldn't stop the Dolphins from run the ball and they, they were giving up 5.8 yards a carry so um you know I think the Rams if they can stop Sony Michelle and then we'll get into them being able to run the ball is Todd Gurley is he, is he right? Is he finally going to get it yeah. going? Is he going to yeah. be, you know, the Todd Gurley that we know? And, and of course, uh, you know, a guy that you're familiar with, too, C.J. Anderson. Absolutely. Well, uh, not to not to keep dwelling on the fact uh, with the whole pressure on Brady, but uh, just to go back to that for a second. I mean, you can't blitz the guy because he no. knows you got man up uh, one-on-one on the outside or, or man coverage. So if you blitz him or you even zone blitz him, he's getting that ball out. You can't sit back and rush three. He'll torch you. That offensive line is not going to give up sacks to a three-man rush. And if so, so you're you're like you said, the only way to beat the Patriots. You talked about the Jaguars. We talked about the Broncos. Even the Ravens, uh, when they were able to beat them in that AFC title game a couple times or in the playoffs a couple times, the front four pressure, the man up on the outside, getting physical with those receivers. I feel like I say it every damn game I watch the Patriots. Why are you sitting back? Why are you giving them so much room? You got to press. You got to take your chances and hope they don't beat you over the top because you got to press those guys and give press the receivers outside and give the D-line a chance to get in there, that four-man rush to get in there so you can use your linebackers and coverage underneath routes, stuff like that. But oh, boom, yeah. back, yeah. So Well, I mean, I, and Wade Phillips is not going to sit back and uh, l- no let chance. them do that. I mean, he, and, and, you know, uh, speaking of experience, Wade Phillips, you know, Forget all the years in coaching, but you know he's got the Super Bowl experience. He's got the experience beating Tom Brady and the Patriots. I think he's going to come up with a game plan that uh, that's going to be able to really slow down the Patriots. I really do. And, uh, you know the, the key is going to be can Donald Sue get that pressure up the middle, and then Dante Fowler, Michael Brockers pressure on the outside, and then uh, what do the Rams have back in the secondary? They have big physical corners and that's what that's what can give the Patriots troubles those big physical corners that can beat up on their small receivers uh so that, that's something that I definitely look for but Wade Phillips you know he's just not going to sit back and uh, uh you know he, he, yeah. you know him from from his Denver days he, he's aggressive there's no way in in hell that he sits there and lets Tom Brady be comfortable you you just can't do that and uh, if if the front four is not getting pressure for some reason, which I personally think they're going to, if for some reason they get to halftime and Brady's just not, he's going to change it up at halftime. I've seen him change his whole game plan. All right, send the blitz, send the blitz. We'll go one on one on the outside, you know, with our big physical corners. But uh, to touch, uh, just go to the other side of the ball really quick. And we tell you mentioned Todd Gurley. He's obviously hurt. He's been hurt mm-hmm. since week 15. That's the reason C.J. Anderson has been so productive and has been in the, you know, getting the carries in that offense. He he cannot have a 10-yard rushing game like he did in the no. AFC title game. There's no way, way around it. I, I'm sorry. If he, if that guy's got 10 yards in the Super Bowl and the Rams are holding that trophy at the end, I mean, I, I, I would just be you know floored. I think anybody would be. C.J. Anderson, another guy you talk about experience with the Broncos, just like Tlaib against the Patriots, has had success against the Patriots. And um, 
So he, he's definitely going to be a big part if Todd Gurley's not 100%, which I don't think he is. I mean, I don't think anybody thinks he no. is. So that's a big key. they got to run the ball because that play-action pass from the Rams is lethal. If Jared Goff is sitting back there getting play action because they're running running the ball successfully, he's going to find open guys. Robert Woods, Brandon Cooks, um, Reynolds has been – Gerald uh, Everett, too. Gerald they're, Everett, a big yeah, a big yeah, tight end. Yeah, I mean – yeah, I think he's going to be a key guy for, for the Rams, too. Absolutely. And, you know, Cooper Cup uh, getting oh. hurt. He huge. I mean, can you imagine if they had Cooper Cup in this that game? Was, I feel that, like. that was Jared Goff's security blanket. You know, sure that, was. That, that was a big loss. Yeah. And uh, I know Reynolds has, has filled in nicely, um, but, you know, he's no Cooper Cup. But, you know, when you're playing the Patriots, you need it from everybody, from the mm-hmm. from number one to number 53 on that roster. You need everybody. And uh, that's what obviously what the Rams are going to need um, come Sunday. And they do um, spread it around. They do say, you know, you got Cooks, Woods, Reynolds, Higby, Everett. Uh, you definitely spread it around the passing game, and then they got the one-two punch with Gurley and Anderson. But my opinion, they need at least at least 120 yards rushing from that Gurley Anderson duo. Uh, probably more like 150 to close to 200. And I and I think they could get it though. I really do. I I, I think they um, the Patriots can be run at. And uh, if Gurley's right, I, I look for the Rams to have some success. Yeah, I do as well. I mean, and the Chiefs kind of abandoned the run game. Last week got down like fourteen nothing, and that mm-hmm. was it. I mean, typical Andy Reid style, you know, the panicking, push the panic <coughs> button. The second, oh, yeah, <coughs> choking, <coughs> choking on his cheesesteak. But that's another story. But yeah, I mean, you have I to love the ball. You have to stay committed. Dream hunt. Dream hunt. Yeah. yeah, well, that's that's also yeah. you know yeah. a big thing. I mean, Damian Williams had one hundred and thirty yards yeah. against the Colts the week before. I mean, but you know, you get down early, and you, McVay's it has shown in the past too that he'll he'll abandon the run as well. So. They're gonna have to have to keep the run game going as long as possible because you need to keep Brady and his and his you know his his guys off the field. Um, and, and then, like you said, the the bread and butter for the Rams is those that play action, those rollouts, those bootlegs. That's that's the bread and butter on that McVay offense. And uh, you know, it'll be interesting. Brandon Cooks, you know, I, I believe he got hurt early in the Super Bowl last year for the Patriots, and that, that was a big loss for them. And uh, uh, now, uh, you know, a year year later, I think he's he's going to be a big factor in this game for for the Rams. So yeah, something. He's definitely that deep threat for mm-hmm. them. Uh, the uh, the play action pass, and if he gets singled up one on one, I mean, the Patriots in the past have, uh, you know, the reputation of taking away your best receiver or your best option. But with the Rams, is Todd Gurley your best option? Is Brandon Cooks your best option? Is Robert Woods? It's always different guys every week. So that's they're going to have to take a you know. <laughs> And, you know, I think we talk about the Rams having those guys up front that can get pressure on the quarterback, Aaron Donald, 20 half sacks. You know, you got Sue, you got Fowler. Patriots really don't have that guy. I mean, Trey Flowers is pretty solid, but they don't have that big time pass rusher. So, um, you know, can they generate pressure without blitzing? That's going to be something worth watching, too. I'll tell you what, what a... Uh, what a great signing for the Rams last year, getting Andrew Whitworth, the uh, oh, sturdy left tackle from the Bengals. I, he's just been such a rock for them at that left tackle spot, protecting Goff's blind side. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting. He should be uh, he should be a factor as well. Like uh, like you said, they don't have that that main. Pr- I mean, Trey Flowers maybe maybe be their best pass rusher. I mean, Pats in the in the in the past have gotten rid of those guys. You know, Chandler mm-hmm. Jones and wondering like, hmm, like they just traded Chandler Jones Jones for a guard. It's like okay, well, that's, you know, they're the Patriots. So that's that's the one guy I think the Patriots have definitely got the better of pretty much all the trades they've done. But Chandler Jones one. is probably one guy that you know maybe if Belichick had a do over, he maybe would. Uh, still hold on to you know I think, would, I think he would want to do over on that one we talked about the rams having to score early and uh you know and, and run the ball and score and keep the patriots off the field talk about the patriots and their super bowl history they've been the nine in the brady belichick era they've been like i said this is their ninth super bowl in the eighth pre, eight previous super bowls last year against the eagles they scored three points in the first quarter that was the first time they scored any points in the first quarter in any super bowl in the it's brady amazing. belichick era and to think they've won five of them it's like Wait a minute, you know. You, so we sit here and talk about having to score early, but maybe they don't. Last year was an absolute shootout. That was a different story. You know, nobody thought that game was going to go mm-hmm. the way it did. So we kind of throw that analysis on that one right out the window because that was you know a different, uh, different game. But uh, I mean, just it, it's it's crazy to me. But this this Rams offense, they're gonna they're gonna attack and they're gonna keep attacking. So I think this is going to be the Super Bowl where the Pats need to score a touchdown early just to 
you know, maybe get the Rams in a little bit of a panic sure. because McVay has shown that in the past. Yeah, and uh, obviously the Rams are a different team when they play from behind. They like to get the lead, pound the football, and then get after you with that front four. So uh, definitely, I know, I know uh, the Saints, they were able to come back, but uh, they definitely, uh, it's a team that prefers to play with the lead so they can they can get at you with Gurley and then uh, come after the quarterback. Yes, for sure. Well, I know we're both uh, really excited for this game. Uh, at first, it was like, oh, another Patriots Super Bowl. Oh, the Rams are not ready. But the more we looked into it, the more, you know, research, so to speak, in-depth analysis we did, we're like, man, this is going to be a hell of a matchup. And I know that you guys uh, have, have responded well to it. As, uh, also, we had a poll uh, on the page uh, who you thought would win. I know everyone was like, well, who do I want to win? Or who do I say? Well, no, obviously, we all know who you want to mm-hmm. win, unless you're a Patriots fan. We'll just be honest with that. But uh, we had 40 votes on it so far. We're going to uh, let it run till the Super Bowl. It's at 55% of you think the Pats are going to take it and take home their sixth Lombardi trophy to tie the Steelers. And we got 45 for the Rams. So we'll see how that goes. And I know uh, we got a few predictions. Uh, Pat, you want to start with yours, man? And, too, and just to, uh, you know, we talked about all the, the player matchups and previews, but how about McVay versus Belichick, the, the young genius versus kind of the old? Yes. I mean, yeah. you talk about these are the two best coaches in the game right now. I, you know, uh, for, yeah. I don't care what anyone says. These are the best two guys. Um, I know people say, well, McVay's only been coaching for two years, but you can just tell this guy, this guy's great, you know? So you give these two guys two weeks to prepare – I mean, you're going to see some great game plans. So that, that's exciting. And then, of course, Wade Phillips, too, um, on the defensive side of the ball. But like I said, I'm going back. Um, the, the Patriots have had some problems with teams like the Jaguars, those big, physical, young uh, front fours, front sevens. And, and the Rams have that. And if, if they can get they can get a little bit of a lead and if they can uh, get Todd Gurley really going – I really think they can really control this game and win it handily. Not not blow the Patriots out. I'm not crazy enough oh. to say they're going to blow the Patriots out. I think anybody's but crazy I think, enough. <laughs> but I think they can really control this game because I think they're going to win at the line of scrimmage, and that's 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 where these games are won and lost. So I'm going Rams 27, Patriots 21. All right, excellent. Well, so – that's the first one of our uh, – Pat says 27-21. We will post that, obviously, and uh, see where we go, <clears throat> how close we are. And uh, for me, it, it's – you know, we touched on it, the front four, obviously, getting pressure to Brady. Uh, if you're the Patriots, you need to make Jared Goff beat you. We talked about the importance of stopping the run. Todd Gurley, now C.J. Anderson, who's come along. If they can stop the run, make them one-dimensional, Bill Belichick is going to have a field day with Jared Goff. He's going to. He's going to be able to show him things he hasn't seen. Show him things, uh, some you know, blitz packages, coverage packages that he hasn't seen. Personally, don't think that's going to happen. I believe Todd Gurley is ready. I believe last week or two weeks ago now, where he didn't have to play much in New Orleans, is going to be big. He didn't have to play a lot. C.J. Anderson has basically made him fresh. It's a Super Bowl. You put it all on the line. I don't care if your toe's broken, your leg's broken. These guys, you're playing. Like You know what I mean? These guys are playing. Doesn't matter. Super Bowl, you worked all year for this. Um, I believe, like you said, the line of scrimmage is going to be a big thing. Offensive line for the Rams, defensive line for the Rams. That's where this game's going to be won. The running the football. I do think the Patriots, just because they are the Patriots, are going to find ways to score. You know, you can stop them, you can stop them, you can stop them. Um, but I feel like we're going to have a close game. I feel like it's going to come down to, at my favorite pre- people on the field, the kicker. Huh. Greg Zerline, he hit a 57-yarder last uh, last game to, to send them into the Super Bowl. I think with 30 seconds left, he hits a 47-yarder to make them champions. Wow. I got Rams 34, Patriots 31. And, yes, all you guys listening are going to be like, here goes Sab again picking against the Pats. Well, you know what? I'm here, and uh, we'll talk about it for you know and days to come. And let me just say that my my three uh, key guys, X factors, if you will, for the Rams, we talked about Keep Talib with his familiarity playing for and against the Patriots, Gerald Everett, the fast young tight end, and then you probably already know who my third guy is, uh, Dante <laughs> Fowler. I mean, he's the guy. I mean, he, he you were you nailed it against the, the Saints. He had the big hit. That made Brees throw the pick, and uh, I, I think he might make some plays this game too. So, I mean, you, you could be spot on. So, we hope you guys enjoyed 
this Super Bowl preview. We can't wait for Sunday. Uh, like we said, please make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube page, Jira and Nuzzy Podcast. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Jira and at, at Jira Nuzzy, excuse me, J-I-R-A-N-U-Z-Z-I. -Z -Z and also like the Facebook page if you haven't already. We do appreciate you guys listening. And we uh, got uh, an exciting NBA show coming up. And what better time? We've been playing this NBA show for about a week now. And now with uh, the big trade yesterday and the potential trade of Anthony Davis, uh, uh, it's going to be a fun NBA show we're going to have coming at you. We'll probably end up doing that Monday or Tuesday. Uh, and we'll, of course, recap yes. the Super Bowl. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so we got a lot of fun stuff here planned for yeah. you. And uh, I know we just kind of want to give some – Quick shout out to some of our uh, loyal listeners. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, just a couple, couple shout outs. Uh, Pat, I don't know if you want to start. I got uh, a <clears throat> yeah. guys here. I mean, you know, I, my boy JJ Bueno, uh, you know, Dallas Cowboy fan. Uh, appreciate you, man. I, all, the, all the support you get, you know, you've given us and uh, the kind words that we received. Uh, I know uh, you got a couple buddies. You well, well, too, and just before I go, you know, some of my buddies, uh, Viola on uh, oh, yeah. Facebook's been, he's been great. Definitely appreciate all the comments. And uh, we're, we're going to be getting into uh, the Nick Bosa talk. Don't worry. We're going to probably do a whole segment on that. So Absolutely. we definitely appreciate that. And, um, my, oh, my, my Madden boys, sorry, real quick. I forgot my Madden boys, Robbie Lewis, Roderick Jackson, man, the uh, guys in my, in my Madden leagues that we talk about, Brian Fahey, you know, you guys, uh, my my you know best man at my wedding uh you know my my man's always always uh supporting us and giving us likes and comments and kind words so definitely appreciate and, all you guys and Riffic just gave us a nice shout out on facebook we definitely appreciate that my my good friend peter from from jersey uh definitely john johnny calderon uh great guy too he, he's get, definitely uh giving us some nice support uh uh, our guy Mike from Outback. Absolutely, <laughs> he's he's been listening to the show and plugging it. We appreciate that as well. Yes, sir. And uh, you know, I'm sure we've forgotten tens to twenty to thirty to fifty names. I know there's like 170 of you that like the page, which is just unbelievable. I really appreciate you guys and our wives. Our of course, our wives that are uh, dealing with us. You know, talking about sports always, and now we're talking about sports even more. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we really appreciate. You know their understanding with uh with the way we are but um we're gonna get out of here guys yep. uh, we really appreciate you and uh and uh make sure you guys tune in uh to sunday for the super bowl 6 30 uh we're gonna be doing some live uh updates as far as you know posts and stuff like that well, we might we, even uh, go live yeah we might, might even go, go live. live depending on what's going on we might go live at halftime with some analysis stuff like that but uh just be on the lookout for that pat any last words man no uh we appreciate all the support. Uh, likes keep going up. Views keep going up. Just just really excited. We'll keep building on this momentum. And uh, just stay tuned That's until it. that next episode. Yes, sir.